charging by conduction. Here I'm holding a positive charge wand near the electroscope. As we hold it nearer and nearer, the legs separate. However, on this time, I'm going to actually touch it. And when I touch it, you can see the legs separate farther apart. Then when I take the rod away, they stay separated. So in this case, we've actually put a charge onto the electroscope and the charge is staying on the electroscope. Notice again when I move the rod towards it, if I move it towards the electroscope, the legs are still moving farther away from each other. That tells us that the electroscope and the rod both have the same charge on it. Once I touch it, grounding the electroscope will draw off the electric charge and it goes back to being neutral again. Here's the same thing in reverse. I'm going to use a negative charge rod this time. We hold the charge near the electroscope and the legs separate. We touch it, they stay separated. And as I move the rod towards it, the legs move even farther apart. And that tells us that the electroscope and the rod have the same charge. However, in this case, that same charge is negative, where the first case it was positive. And then once again, if I ground it, it draws the charge off and we're back to a neutral object. Explaining that, charging by conduction, electrons transfer when the touching goes on. So here's my animation. When we hold the negative charge rod near the electroscope, the free electrons are repelled down into the bottom. They're trying to get as far away as possible from the negative charge on the wand. As I bring the wand up and touch the top of the electroscope, the positive charges on the electroscope are attracting electrons off of the rod onto the electroscope. Then when I bring the wand away, the wand still has a net negative charge because it had a lot of extra electrons on it. And the electroscope ends up with a net negative charge because these charges down here were the ones that were making this neutral and now we have some additional electrons on the electroscope. So it stays with a negative charge. Grounding the object is going to draw off the extra electrons. When you're grounding something, you're touching it to the earth and the earth provides a pathway for electrons to flow through. Right? The earth serves as an infinite reservoir of electrons so they can flow to the earth or and not change the charge of the earth or vice versa.